Hey, good morning, y'all. Josh with Josh's Severe Weather. Happy Friday to you. We've got a ton of weather to talk about, so let's get right to it over here. All right, so yes, there's some weather to talk about this weekend here in the Northeast. We'll get to that in just a bit. But next week, we've got a major disruptive storm system with a lot of uh, very significant weather coming to a good portion of the United States. So what's going to happen is we'll have a low pressure system forming in the plains heading into Tuesday. That's going to draw a much colder air in behind it, but it's going to take its sweet time moving east. What's happening is we have a large region of high pressure kind of blocking the progress of this storm. That's going to allow some cold air to seep down out ahead of it. But at the same time, we've got a lot of warm air coming up. So as the storm moves east, we could see some storms forming uh, late Monday night, Tuesday morning. And then as the heating of the day takes place here on Tuesday, and especially in the Tuesday night, um, conditions are looking more and more likely for a severe weather outbreak, including tornadoes. And a few of those, I think, could be strong as we get down into the Mississippi Delta region and perhaps heading into early Wednesday farther south and east in Alabama and Mississippi. Uh, on the uh, southeast coast, we'll see low pressure forming. It's going to move up the coast with cold air spilling down out ahead of it. Uh, with all this moisture overspreading that colder air, we do have the possibility for a late week storm. It may be cold enough for some ice across uh, areas in the Appalachians and just eastward before that changes to rain. Um, that will depend on the progress of this storm. The faster it moves, the more likely that cold air scours out of it. The slower it moves, the more likely this cold air remains in place. And uh, this is a classic cold air damming situation. Whether or not the storm moves fast, we're damned if we do and damned if we don't. <laughs> All right, and that's of course D-A-M-M-E-D. So um, we're gonna of course drill down the details of this storm system next week. Still quite a bit of model uncertainty as you can imagine with it being seven to eight days out. Um, but we've got some very interesting scenarios coming and this uh, cold wave that we've been talking about is starting to take shape, attacking on both fronts from the west and from the northeast. But we have a lot of warm air down south and a warm Gulf of Mexico, so moisture coming into play is going to make things very interesting here. Uh, in the upper Midwest, uh, we are going to see this low pressure system kind of spin and spin and eventually weaken as it comes east. But a conveyor belt of cold weather will produce near blizzard conditions across the western Dakotas, eastern Wyoming, and northwestern Nebraska. Some places here could be looking at a 15 to 20 inch snowfall before all is said and done. As it spreads east, we could see a thumping of some heavy snow in parts of the Twin Cities on north and east into Wisconsin. And that snow will eventually drop south and east before this storm system takes over here later in the week. Uh, if you're in Florida, you're staying warm, although uh, a little bit cooler in northern Florida here early next week. Uh, where that area clashes, we could see maybe some strong storms and heavy rainfall across the northern part of the state as we head into Thursday, maybe Friday as well. So we'll take a look at the GFS model. This is this morning here on Friday. You can see a storm system that is uh, moving into northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. A bit of ice, but looking at mainly just a light to moderate snowfall. It's getting pretty close to the Chicago area. In fact, it's knock, knock, knocking on Kevin's door here in Winnetka, Illinois. How about that? Uh, but as this storm moves eastward, it's going to fade and run into dry and cold air as we get into the day tomorrow. Uh, it's still very ugly here in the Carolinas. And notice you can see this pressure gradient starting to build southwestward. That means some chillier air is working its way in. And it's going to be a kind of a chilly, cloudy weekend here in the Carolinas. Uh, next wave comes in across the uh, Mississippi Valley here on Sunday. It's going to pick up a clipper system. You can see a bit of a disturbance here. That means some snow across lower Ontario, then moving into New York and northern Pennsylvania. As we get into Sunday during the day and Sunday afternoon and night, could see some locally heavy snow across the Catskills. I did talk about New York City. Right now, looks like we're going to have some mixing issues. Um, it could end briefly as a period of heavy snow in the morning on Monday. Um, the model output is not quite as heavy on snow totals. I'm not saying we can't have a brief period of heavy snow in the morning Monday in New York and even Long Island, Southern Connecticut, but it's going to be kind of a marginal event, I'm thinking. Not to scare everybody yesterday because it looked like the possibilities were a little bit better for that, but right now as it stands, um, the chance for heavy snow looks like it stays north of the New England Thruway here, north of New York City and, and the Bronx, and maybe just upstate in Westchester. And when I say heavy, I mean three or four inches, most of that falling in a couple of hours. 
Uh, so anyway, as we head into next week, another, um, another shot of cold air comes right on down here. Uh, it's quiet across the eastern U.S., but we've got our storm system cranking up in the central U.S. Let me show you the view of the central here. Uh, this is Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday night. Big snow across the central Rockies, even down into the Texas highlands. And uh, we start to see rain building on Tuesday morning, maybe some thunderstorms by afternoon in Oklahoma and east Texas. Uh, looks like the overall trend for this storm is that it's coming in a little bit slower. It's running into this region of high pressure. And so the severe weather threat Monday looks to be pretty much nil. Uh, we may see some heavier storms Tuesday before lunchtime in northeast Texas, eastern Oklahoma. But um, as far as the ingredients for tornadoes, I think things will get delayed a little bit from what we were thinking on yesterday. So what that means is as we get into Tuesday night, I think the threat for tornadoes starts growing. So a nighttime event, unfortunately, could put a lot of folks in danger here in northern Louisiana, eastern Arkansas, maybe Memphis overnight, and of course the Mississippi Delta region. And then as we carry on into Wednesday morning, still potentially some severe weather, maybe a few tornadoes moving into eastern Mississippi and western Alabama, maybe southern parts of middle Tennessee. Uh, but you guys can see if I draw this line right here, this is kind of where the warm front is. Uh, the threat for severe weather in Kentucky, Illinois, and Missouri looks like it's going to avoid you to the south. This is kind of a change in the philosophy that we had a couple days ago, that that extent of severe weather starts shifting south a little bit, and that may put areas like New Orleans, Biloxi, and Mobile uh, into the threat zone here on Wednesday. Also, a lot of heavy rain to deal with. So this low pressure region is going to weaken. It's still going to be snowing, though. We have a lot of upper level support for snow in the upper Midwest. You can see a little bit of light rain tries to mix in here, too. Uh, the cold air is kind of getting uh, diverted into two places here, uh, one across Montana, the other across Michigan. Uh, in between the two, that's where all the weather is going to be, but we could have some mixing issues in places like Chicago Wednesday afternoon. Uh, now let's go east again. Here's where things start getting interesting. Now, this is a bit of a shift from yesterday. This is the GFS model. It is the coldest. I'll show you the others. But you can see with this cold air dropping down in the foothills in North Carolina and Virginia and West Virginia, uh, it may be cold enough to see uh, some rain that starts freezing on surfaces and maybe a little bit of sleet farther north and east. This is a bit more extreme than the average of the models. I'm going to show it to you, but it's not necessarily my official forecast. Uh, because I don't know if we're looking at an ice storm in Charlotte, for example, on Thursday morning. I certainly hope not anyway. Same goes for like Spartanburg, Greenville, um, even uh, getting close to like Rock Hill and, and uh, these areas here. It's showing a pretty persistent area of frozen precipitation starting overnight Wednesday night and carrying into Thursday before temperatures moderate. Uh, how much cold air comes down is going to be a big, big deal. I mean, we could be talking about sleet and snow across Virginia maybe even a little bit of snow in DC before this system starts uh, developing on the coast and moving up. Um, this solution is very interesting, showing a nor'easter now. Um, we haven't seen this in every run, um, but it is showing the threat for maybe a pretty big snow in New Jersey, New York City, and New England here uh, Friday into Saturday. So that's definitely something on the table. Um, that is only though if this upper low drops all the way down here instead of it being an open trough up in here. I'll show you the European now and you'll notice things are a little bit different. That's not a surprise. The GFS and the Euro kind of beat to their own drums. Uh, so let's do that. This is weatherbell.com. We'll go back here. This is, sorry, that's the wrong model. Uh, back to the zero Z. This is the weekend. We go into next week, starts wet in the southeast, then dries out and turns colder. But you'll notice the red line's advancing faster. It's showing that this uh, area of cold air, this large um, region of high pressure, is not centered as far southward. So what happens is the air starts to warm up before this system gets in place. We still see uh, on the front end of things the threat for frozen precipitation, but it's not all the way down here in western North Carolina and Virginia. It's actually in northwestern Virginia and into uh, parts of Maryland and central Pennsylvania. Um, we are still seeing the threat for low pressure forming off the Carolina coast Thursday night, Friday morning. But the track of it is farther inland, and that brings rain up to the big cities versus snow. Uh, so if I'm making a forecast right now, I'm pulling my hairs out because it's like, well, is it going to rain in New York, or is it going to be snow, or is it going to be in, in between the two? Because this upper level low is still hanging way back. GFS had it all the way over here. The Euro's got it back in the Great Lakes. Let's look at the Canadian as maybe a, a compromise between the two, and you can see still in the Great Lakes, but this um, this coastal low is much quicker to move up, and it actually shows potential ice in places like New York and getting into Boston on Thursday morning. 
uh, before a change over to rain. So middle of the road solution, maybe that's the way we need to go right now. Um, still shows maybe a little bit of ice in uh, parts of the Virginias, Maryland, Pennsylvania, um, maybe even close to Philadelphia and Baltimore, uh, but primarily rain up the East Coast. So that's just something we're going to watch. And going back to my map, you'll see I've got that line like right there. Uh, maybe an ice storm. I don't have it all the way to Charlotte, but maybe close to the Piedmont Triad and Roanoke and those areas. Um, but this is my compromise forecast at this point. Still looks like it's cold enough, though, to produce snow across uh, much of New England, except maybe right on the coast. But that could switch back to snow next weekend. We've got eight days to watch it, though. So things can definitely change. Um, here's the new Storm Prediction Center forecast for Tuesday. You'll notice um, Monday, uh, the threat for severe weather has been removed from the Red River Valley. Tuesday, it starts showing up in the afternoon and at night and everything's a little bit slower. And then Wednesday drops down to the New Orleans, Mobile, Pensacola region uh, for Wednesday into Wednesday night. Here's a look at the European upper level pattern as well. You guys can see how quickly things are moving across the central US. There's still a strong ridge down here. So a big clash in this region between warm air and much colder air. But you'll notice there's definitely a block here that keeps things out of Eastern Canada. And that's going to be kind of our big player here. You see this upper level trough dropping down through New York City here on Monday morning. Big storm forming across the Four Corners region here on Monday night and Tuesday. And uh, this is the area we've got to watch for severe weather Tuesday night. You can see kind of some higher uh, amounts of 300 millibar wind. Um, this is kind of going to enhance uh, what could be forming here and give it a little bit more shear, a little bit more wind energy to work with. And uh, this is a major storm, the biggest one of the season so far. Look at all this, uh, look at all this warming aloft coming here on Thursday night, uh, definitely feeding a lot of moisture up the East Coast. Uh, so regardless of what happens, we're going to have major weather on Thursday into Friday morning at least. And then much colder air pours in right behind things here. One last thing for you guys, let's look at temperatures. This is the GFS. You can see this cold air just kind of sneaks its way on down the spine of the Appalachians right on into the Carolinas. And over the weekend, it is chilly, and it's even colder on Monday and Tuesday. We could have um, temperatures getting close to freezing in places like Raleigh and Danville, Virginia. Um, then you see all this warm air back here. So there's definitely a very well-marked uh, line of delineation here between this colder air and much warmer air, uh, where Florida has not been participating in winter yet. And where this ends up getting, because you can see Wednesday afternoon, it's got some raw air in place in the Western Carolinas, uh, is gonna play into um, how cold it gets. Well, not co how cold it gets, but how much um, potential wintry weather we see. So Europeans got this front here, the GFS has it down here. Which one's gonna be right? I couldn't tell you. Um, my forecast you know, allows for this to happen, but it may be a little bit too extreme because it is the GFS model. But you can see on Thursday, the warm air kind of disappears. You've got a front moving east and all of a sudden, you know, maybe it's 50 in Nashville, but in the 30s in upstate South Carolina Thursday afternoon. And then you can see the warm air comes up through this cyclone on the weekend, but doesn't make it up the east coast. Uh, we've actually got a lot colder air coming down here over the weekend and into next week. Quite a bit of cold air. So I think our warmest days are behind us here across the uh, mid-Atlantic and southeastern parts of the United States once we get into the next few days. Uh, look at this cold air lurking though before Christmas. Um, big time cold coming down. This is right around Christmas Eve. We see it tries to make its way all the way down to the Southern Plains and Rockies. I've seen models showing this cold much farther down. Um, either way you look at it, it's gonna be quite a bit colder pattern for the second half of the month of December. Um, and real quick, the reason why it's so cold, we've had such a quick start to winter. This is the snow cover in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, we were actually at record pace. We've kind of leveled off, but with this next storm coming, we could see um, a continued trend where we're above this 56 year mean all the way up into here. Um, a look at the uh, climate forecast system shows that. You guys can see cold in the West right now starts to spread South and East. Uh, the other thing too is this wasn't in the models a few days ago, but this cold air mass across Eastern Canada taking place here in the Mid-Atlantic region, uh, it's going to be a below average week, regardless of this uh, big uh, spring-like storm system coming eastward. And then the cold continues to advance and take over much of the U.S. in the week leading up to Christmas. And really the week after Christmas remains cold as well. And then we may start to see some moderation towards the second and third weeks of January. But here's the climate forecast system. Here's January. It's not as cold overall, but look at February. 
and look at March. We could have a second half here that rivals um, one of the coldest second halves of winter in recent memory. Now, this is three months out. It's really too tough to make that call, but something I'm going to be keeping an eye on for you guys. Here's my tease. This is going to change quite a bit, but um, we are seeing um, quite a flip from maybe La Nina back to a more neutral state. And um, a lot of that could have to do with the snow cover we're seeing that's building. A lot of that could have to do with volcanic eruptions. There's really a lot to talk about, and it's tough to kind of pin down in a couple minutes for you guys. Hey, I appreciate everybody's time. I hope you all have a safe weekend. We're going to talk about the storm quite a bit here next week. Expect changes to what I'm showing you today. I have to make a forecast, though, so I've got to give you my take on it. But we'll see some changes coming here uh, as we get to the first part of next week. Appreciate y'all's time. Like and subscribe. Share with your friends. And please follow along on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Josh's Severe WX. All right. Thanks, everyone. Y'all take care. God bless.